rules, rules. Let's face it, we couldn't do without them. Religions have rules too, and for Jewish people, they can be found where we meet and pray, in the synagogue. This is our rule book. We call it the Sefer Torah. It's more than just rules. It guides us through our lives. Rabbi Planty is helping me prepare for a special day, my bar mitzvah. That means son of the commandments. Hi, Rabbi. Good morning, Jeremy. You're happy this morning. Yeah. Another week to go? On that day, yes, I've got to show that I'm grown up yeah. and ready to do what the Torah says. The Torah is so special that we treat it like a well, king. We'll Let's start first of all, as usual, as undressing the scroll, this Torah. Here we are. This is a beautiful crown. God gave us this Torah and God being the king of kings, we try and show everybody that the Torah is like a king. Let's take off the cover. This cover here will help us to carry the scroll. We're not allowed to touch it with our hands. We'll put it to the side. Is that what the wooden rollers are for? That's exactly what they're there for. So I can roll it and handle it and lift it, and we can do everything with it. Yeah. All right, let's get started. One week to go. Not long. Now, Jeremy, you're going to need this. Out of respect for the Torah, we don't ever touch it. We use this to help us read. It's called a yad. That's a Hebrew word for hand. Now look, sing it here, and it's a re. On my bar mitzvah, I've got to stand here and read from the Torah, and it's in Hebrew too. Good. Make a space between each. All these seats will be full. My friends, my family, everyone. Good. The Torah is the holiest and oldest book in the Jewish religion, and it all began as a set of rules to guide us. A long, long time ago, the Jewish people were traveling through the desert. When they arrived at a rocky area called Mount Sinai, God called to their leader, Moses. Moses climbed the mountain. There, amid thunder and lightning, God gave Moses ten great rules, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are very important. They tell us about God and about how God wants us to live. He gave us lots of other rules too. The Torah holds a total of 613. Special rules for special times, special breads and special wines. Special clothes with special labels, special candles for the table. Every single day, every single the Torah day. shows us the way, shows us the way. For one another, do good deeds, sharing, caring for people's needs, to young and old. Be sure to give, yes, that's the way we all should live. Wonder at this great creation, remember God at every occasion. The Torah is more precious than gold, read it through life when young and old. Every single day, every single the Torah shows us the way, shows us the way, shows us the way. Like that one? Mum, the Torah doesn't say you have to wear a suit on your bar mitzvah. No, but I do. Here you are. Off you go. Go and try it on. Roll on my bar mitzvah, then I'll be able to make my own decisions. The Torah shows us the way, shows us the way, shows us the way, shows us the way. That's my clothes sorted. I just hope my Torah readings are smart. The Torah is made up of five books, sometimes called the five books of Moses. 
In each one, there is a mixture of songs, prayers and stories. Genesis. Exodus. Leviticus. Numbers. Deuteronomy. You know, Jeremy, the Torah is full of wisdom and knowledge. It teaches us how to lead our lives. Do you have a favourite part, Rabbi? The story of kindness, when Rebecca is by the well, offering to water not only Eliezer, but the camels. Let me read a bit to you. Avraham zakein babayamim, v'ashem barechet Avraham bakol, v'yomer Avraham el avado zakein beito ha-mosheh b'chol ha-shem. Eliezer was on a special journey. He was the oldest and most trusted servant of a man called Abraham. Abraham had asked him to travel to a far-off land to search for a wife for Isaac, his son. He took with him ten camels and gifts of gold and silver. After a few days, he came to a city. It was late afternoon when he stopped at a well just outside the city to rest his tired and thirsty camels. Beside the well, several women were filling jars with water. Eliezer wondered whether one of them would be the right person to marry Isaac. As he watched them, he prayed to God for a sign. I will ask them for a drink, he thought. If anyone also offers to give my camel some water, that will be a sign that she is Isaac's future wife. May I have a drink of water? He asked one of the girls, but she didn't answer him. Then another girl smiled at Eliezer and said, You must be tired after your long journey. Let me give you some water. Thank you. You are very kind, said Eliezer. When he had finished, she said, Your camels are thirsty. I'll give them water too. As Eliezer watched Rebecca, he was overjoyed at her kindness. From a saddlebag, he took a gold ring and two gold bracelets and gave them to her to thank her for her kindness. Eliezer asked, Is there room at your father's house for me to stay tonight? There is room and plenty of food for your camels. Eliezer thanked God as he thought to himself, Surely this is the wife for Isaac. When they reached Rebecca's home, Eliezer explained that he had been sent by Abraham to find a wife for his son. When the servant had finished his story, Rebecca and her family were amazed and became sure that God wanted Rebecca to be Isaac's wife. Early next morning, Eliezer and Rebecca started on their journey back to Abraham's country. From the moment they met, the love between Isaac and Rebecca grew and grew. Soon after, they were married and lived a long and happy life together. Stories like Rebecca at the Well have been written down for years. Oh. Speaking Hebrew is nothing to writing it. I don't think I'll ever be a scribe. I have been a scribe for 30 years. I write holy books and prayers in the Hebrew language. Here, I am writing the Shema, an important and well-known Jewish prayer. Scribes have been writing in this manner for centuries. We use special ink, we use feather quills, specially shaped in the form of a pen. We don't write on paper, we write on animal skins called parchment. This is the skin of a calf and the outside we can see the marks of the bones, the color of the actual skin of the animal. A very important part 
of the scribe's work is to repair old Sifre Torah. This Sifre Torah is about 75 years old. And as you can see, the ink has peeled off in many places and therefore it requires a lot, a lot of work to restore it. My work makes me feel very close to God. I get great satisfaction from knowing my work is helping to keep God's word alive. I love to see the Torah being passed on from generation to generation. Today is the day I've been waiting for, my bar mitzvah. And God spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the Jewish people and tell them that in every generation they must make tassels for the corners of their clothes and they must put a blue thread in the tassel at each corner. This shall be known to you as sits it, and when you look at it, you will remember and obey all God's commandments and you will not be tempted by your heart and your eyes to misbehave. In this way, you will remember and obey all my commandments and you will be holy to your God. It's all over now, Jeremy. It was absolutely fabulous. Did he do wonderful? Thank you. We're very proud of him. We're very, very proud of him. Today, Jeremy becomes Bar Mitzvah, and from now on, he'll have to fulfill everything that's written in the Torah. This will help him to become a good individual and a very good Jew. I was so happy and proud to hear Jeremy read from the Torah this morning because the Torah is such an important part in a Jewish person's life. Jeremy's my big brother and I thought that he did really well today and I thought he made the words sound very, very clear and lovely. I've watched Jeremy grow up and I feel very proud of him today when he makes the change from childhood to manhood, when he can follow the rules of the Torah and make his own decisions in life. My dad. Mum's name is Elaine. This is my brother Adam. And my name is Sarah. We're a Jewish family. I'll show you around. This is our house. It's just like any other house, but because we're Jewish, we have lots of Jewish things. Like this. This is a mezuzah. In this is an important Jewish prayer which reminds us that God is always with us. We're supposed to touch it when we pass, but I can't reach it yet. <laughs> we call this our Jewish straw. This is a Kiddush cup. We drink wine from it once we say a blessing, a prayer. It used to belong to my great-grandmother and it's over a hundred years old. This is the Jewish prayer book, a Siddur. Inside, we read from right 
to left. Once you close it, you have to kiss it on both sides. My great-grandfather was a scribe. He used to write holy books in Hebrew. Shin, Reish, Hey. Let's spell Sarah in Hebrew. Sarah means princess. If you want to see something really Jewish, come into the kitchen. In the Torah, our holy book, there are rules about food. It says that we cannot mix meat and milk together. So, in this area, we cook meat mills, and in this area, we cook milk. Cheese omelette tonight, Sarah. Yum. We have two of everything. A sink for meat and a sink for milk dishes. A drawer for meat cutlery, a drawer for milk cutlery. Meat plates in here, milk plates in here. Meat, milk, meat, milk, meat, milk, meat, milk, meat, milk, meat, milk. Keeping meat and milk separate is just one of many of God's rules about food. Oh, good, these are kosher. The food that fits God's rules is called kosher. Sometimes it's hard to know what is kosher and what isn't. So we have books to help. And we even have songs. You've got to have a split hoof. You've got to chew your cud. The rabbit is a no, no. And so are pigs that play in mud. You cannot be a bird of prey. And that is what the rabbis say. So when you eat meat, it's kosher. You fishes need a coat of scales. You've got to have a set of fins. And if you are a shellfish, then sorry you just don't fit in. Vegetables, any sort will do. From broccoli to potato, and from fruit that's also true. Eat grapes or apples any day. They're all okay the kosher way. Enjoy that. to Pesach. That means Passover. Pesach is a really special festival. Jewish families all over the world are getting ready for it. We're shopping for our Pesach meal. Adam, we need some lettuce and parsley. That's not parsley. It is parsley. Yes. Let's go. Okay. Adam can never tell his vegetables apart. All the food in this shop is kosher. You can often tell by looking for the kosher label.
This is matzah. It's a kind of thin, crispy bread which we eat instead of ordinary bread during the week of Pesach. Excellent salt. Ground almonds and the wine for the haroset. Pesach is my favourite time of year. It's really busy, but it's good fun. All of this food is for a really big family meal. It's called a Seder, and we use some of these foods to help us understand the story of how our people escaped from slavery in Egypt. For our special Pesach meal, the Seder, there are special foods to be prepared. You've done well, Elaine. It looks lovely. Thank you. Well, it's lovely to see everyone here to celebrate the Seder again. And to start us off on the story of the Seder, as we do every year, Adam, do you want to sing the Manishtana, please? All right. Manish Tana Halal Hase Mikol Halalot Mikol Halalot Right, Adam, to find out why this night is different from all other nights, let's start to read the story. Avodim Hayinu Lefaro Bemitzrayim Vayotzienu Hashem Elokeinu Misham Biod Chazaka Uvizroa Natuya Long, long ago, the Jewish people lived in the land of Egypt. The ruler of Egypt was a man called Pharaoh. Pharaoh was afraid that the Jewish people were becoming too powerful and that they would turn against him. So he took their freedom away and made them slaves. We dipped parsley into salt water because the Jewish people cried when they were slaves and their tears were salty. Pharaoh forced our people to work in the hot sun they pulled large, heavy stones and made bricks from clay. This mixture reminds us of the mortar which the Jewish slaves mixed up to build bricks. Charoset is made from ground almonds, apples and wine. The Jewish slaves built great towns and cities for Pharaoh. The work was hard and dangerous and the slaves were not allowed to rest. It was a very bitter time for the Jewish people. We remember the bitterness of slavery by eating bitter herbs like coarseradish. God told Moses, the leader of the Jewish people, to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go free. But Pharaoh's heart was as cold as ice. He answered, no. Moses warned Pharaoh that unless he let them go, terrible things would happen to the Egyptians. And they did. The river Nile turned to blood. Frogs covered the land. The air was filled with flies. Wild beasts roamed the land. Animals died. The Egyptians got diseases. Huge hailstones fell, destroying the crops. When the crops grew again, locusts ate them. The sun stopped shining. It was night all the time. Again, Moses pleaded with Pharaoh, but Pharaoh wouldn't listen. Then, came the last and most terrible plague of all. Egyptian children began to die, even Pharaoh's own son. But the Jewish people were unharmed. That is how this festival of Pesach, or Passover, got its name. Danger passed over the houses of the Jewish people. Finally, Pharaoh gave in and he let the Jewish people go. In a rush, they left their morning work. They packed a few belongings and left as fast as they could. The slaves didn't have time to let their bread rise. They carried it on their backs and the sun baked it into a crisp wafer. 
We eat matzah to remind us of the slaves' unleavened bread. Finally, after 200 years of slavery, the Jewish people were free. Led by Moses, they began the long journey back to their homeland. Suck. Do you know what this this is? This here? No. Well, it's a family tree that goes back six generations. At the Seder, we thank God for giving the Jewish slaves their freedom. Since then, Jewish people have faced other difficult times and many have had to leave their homes and families in war. Our family have had difficult times too. They have moved to other places all over the world, looking for somewhere safe and happy to live. My father came from Russia and my mother from Austria. They married in London and they had 13 children who um, are scattered all over the world, in Canada, in Israel and in Belgium. And of course there's family in England and this is your family, Sarah. What makes Pesach really special is that it's a family time. All over the world, wherever Jews live, the Seder is taking place and the story of freedom is being told. Pesach is a time for thinking about the past and looking hopefully to the future. Shana, 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 Shana.